Hello YouTubers, this is Sesta Ace back again with another video. Thought you wouldn't see me again, I bet, since it's been so long since my last video, but I had to travel out of town. My father passed on the 2nd of this month, and so we had to travel out of town for that. And, well, while it was said that he went, uh, he went peacefully and quickly, he was 87. Before I get into the duties and such. I wanted to go over something concerning yep, I did that wrong. Sinister Cinema. I'm gonna do my Karnak the Magnificent impression. The latest flyer from Sinister Cinema. If I did it properly, I would do a joke now, but anyway, these are their special offers and new releases. 45 gift ideas for 2019-2020. Now, there's more than one page in order for them. The reason why I wanted to bring up Sinister Cinema is because I had been going through the last catalogs that I had received from them that I could find. I probably have last year's, but I couldn't find it. This is the most recent one that I have. Another sales flyer came out. This is the one from 2016. 2017. Now, I went to their site because I had picked out a number of titles that I wanted, and as, you know, you can order directly from their site. They had some information, well, some news, more items of news, multiple items of news. First of all, they are no longer offering their titles in VHS. They were up until last year, but they have finally run out of blank VHS stock. They were using brand new stock. They ran out. They haven't been able to buy more. So now it's DVD only. Although, now the other bit of news uh, was a bit more uh, drastic. Sinister Cinema may be going out of business or not. This uh, may be the last year for a Sinister Cinema catalog or not. It all depends on the amount of orders they receive this year because I think it said last year for the first time in their 36 year history they lost money. So I placed my order and I'm going to be placing another order tonight. Now I have pending orders for DVDs and such from Amazon US and Amazon UK and that's in addition to what I'm going to be showing. Every time I go to Walmart, which has been frequently lately, I go with my wife and spend a little bit of money on DVDs and such. So I thought I would do a video on the factory sealed DVDs and Blu-rays that are in my collection. Once they have been shown in this series of videos, which I think I'm going to call uh, New Arrivals and Still Shrink Wrapped, something along those lines, uh, you will not see them again unless I show them in a video log video. I've already shown this one because it's one I received for Christmas. This is a Blu-ray for the Tenth Victim. I'll be showing these in alphanumerical order. A couple of years back, my wife, she found for sale some uh, dollar DVDs somewhere. I can't remember where she said she was when she saw them. So she picked me up about 50. 
and this is one of them. 80, 80. 18 fingers of death with um, James Liu, Pat Morita, Robin Chow, and uh, Lorenzo Lamas. Lamas is covered up under the price sticker, but I kind of figured that's what the name is. This is from a company called Screen Media. Now, I went to their site. I'm going to try and remember to put a link in the description box for Sinister Cinema and likewise for Screen Media because Screen Media still has films that you can buy or stream, but I haven't been able to find any physical copies for sale. Everything is digital. I'm hoping that well, I did send them an email and ask them about that, and I'm hoping they're going to reply and tell me that there is a way to still get physical media. Now, there are several of these dollar labels that all have the same wording down here. This DVD is compatible with all DVD players. Turbo Labs LLC. I looked up Turbo Labs LLC, and the only thing I could find was Turbo Labs, not no Turbo Lab, not Turbo Labs. That's all I could find. Turbo Lab. I couldn't find Turbo Labs. Turbo Lab has to do with cars and engines and things, not DVDs. So I don't know what the deal is with that. From 2006, rated PG-13, and it was Lorenzo Lamas. All right, catalog number SDSM-02. This, by the way, was released by Blue Underground, and I have other releases from them. All right. This is uh, a documentary which I have no plans on watching. My wife bought it, uh, as I mentioned a couple of years ago, narrated by Annette Binning. This is 14 women. These are supposedly the 14 most powerful women in the U.S. Hillary Rodham Clinton, Elizabeth Dole, Barbara Boxer, uh, Maria Cantwell, Susan Collins, Diane Feinstein, Kay Bailey Hutchinson, Mary Landra, Blanche Lincoln, Barbara Mikowski, Lisa Murkowski, Patty Murray, Olympia Snow, and Debbie Babinow. This is from Scream. Scream. And I'm going to start over. I'm not going to start over because that would drive my granddaughter crazy. She's waiting for me to finish. Screen Media. They also have released titles under the name Screen. I start to do it again. Screen. Screen Media Films. Anyway, this is release SDSM 01. Okay. This stars Peter Strauss and Robert Urich. Kidnapped and buried alive. 83 hours till dawn, based on a true story. A father uh, acts alone to rescue his kidnapped daughter who is buried alive in a box with an air supply that will run out in 83 hours. Rated PG-13 from 1990. This is Screen Media Release SDSM-04. I do have some other things besides screen media in there. This is uh, an episode of a TV series that uh, docudrama does docudramas based on true life uh, historical events. This one is on uh, 
Napoleon and Waterloo. It is the battleground, or no, battleground, the art of war, and it is the episode entitled Waterloo. Now, they have two other episodes, of course, I said there were three episodes in the series, that they offered. One is Battle of the Bulge, and the other Alexander the Great. This is from the long-defunct company Digiview, which uh, went under two different names, Digiview Entertainment and Digiview Productions. I think they ran afoul of copyright issues, so because they were releasing some stuff they didn't have the right to release. Anyway, this is from Digiview, and it is released FAM40, which I assume the FM, FAM stands for family. Okay, Richard Dyson, Trevor Duke, Kimberly J. Brown, Christopher Shire, Big Bad Wolf, where man ends, evil begins. This is Screen Media Release SDSM-37. From 2005, TV edited version. Now, it runs 95 minutes, and um, most of these I have gone to IMDB and double check, and the official running time for these films are the ones given for the TV edited version. So I don't know what's up with that. Okay. Pick this up at some time at Walmart from the $5 bend. This is a film starring Sandra Bullock and it is called The Blind Side. I really fell in love with Sandra Bullock when I saw her in Speed, but then she started appearing in a lot of subpar films. I'll have to see what this one's like. This is from Warner Brothers, and they're still putting in the copyright information, distributed, manufactured and distributed by Warner Home Video, not Warner Home Entertainment. Now recently it was announced, about five days ago, that uh, Warner Brothers and Universal have signed an agreement where they are pooling their DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K distributions outfits. And uh, so in some territories in the world, Warner Brothers will be releasing Warner Brothers and Universal titles. And in some other territories, Universal will be re releasing physical copies of Universal and Warner Brothers titles. They're doing this to cut back on overhead and everything because sale of physical media, sales of physical media have been going down and uh, that's the explanation for that. Now, if I remember correctly, Warner Brothers will be handling North American distribution for Warner Brothers and Universal, Universal Physical Media. However, in place put in place to run these, this operation will be the current head of Universal's home video division. I believe in Japan, if I remember correctly, Universal will have the distribution rights for physical media for the catalog titles belonging to Universal and Warner Brothers. What this will mean, if you're in the U.S. anyway, if uh, well, I'm a customer of Warner Archive, I love Warner Archive because they make available titles from the Warner Brothers and MGM library title, you know, their titles that aren't released in any other way. These are generally DVD R's, and um, they make available films you would not normally get a physical release for. And what this will mean is you will start seeing Universal titles that catalog titles being offered by Warner Archive, which is really cool. 
and this is a 10-year deal that's set to begin in the first quarter of 2021 and will last through to 2031. All right, we have the breakup artist. This is from Screen Media, release SDSM-39, TV edited version from 2003. Okay, this one, I could not find this looking through IMDb. So I did a search at Wikipedia and I found this title. This is called Bug, Bugs Adventures road track. Bug, it, Bugs Adventures is the name of this animated series. This DVD was put out by Mondo TV. Now Mondo TV, I discovered, is an animation company located in Italy. And they not only produce their own uh, titles, but also titles that were produced in Japan. According to that article, Mondo TV has the largest animation library in Europe. This is obviously an educational animated series, animation series, whatever. And this is episodes one through four. Running time, if I remember correctly, is an hour. Yes. So, doing the math quickly in my head. 15 minutes per episode. Although, now that I think of it, the Wikipedia article said 13 minutes per episode. Okay, this is one I got recently from Amazon US. I ordered it on one night and the next morning it was sitting on my doorstep. This is a title that used to be offered by Sinister Cinema. In fact, it's in that catalog that I just showed at the beginning of this video. However, on their site, it's no longer available, which makes sense because it's been newly uh, remastered and is being offered by Redemption. This is a British film. It's a horror comedy that I first saw on YouTube. Someone has po uploaded it to YouTube, but uh, based on the trailer, which is also on YouTube, for this release, this looks is going to look much better than what is on YouTube, but if you want to watch it. If you're familiar with the uh, Carry On films, I would call it Carry On Body Snatchers, because it has the feel of a Carry On film, but it's about body stealers, Burke and Hare. This was put out by Redemption. Being a British film from 1972, I first tried to off order it from Amazon UK, but was uh, informed on screen that it was out of stock and that it was an import title from the US. So I went to Amazon US and ordered it. Burke and Hare. Remastered or mastered in HD from the 35 millimeter negatives. Uh, the Sinister Cinema release was from a 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter print. I can't talk tonight. Um, Brave Desires, Corpses on Film, an interview with Dr. Patricia McCormick, interview with actress Francois Pascal, and the original theatrical trailer, which, as I mentioned, is up on YouTube and it's at Am Amazon also, on Amazon and it looks beautiful compared to what was uploaded or has been uploaded to YouTube. All right, I think what it is, I, oh, warning. There is uh, quite a bit of nudity in this film. All right, we have Chicago, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's also known simply as this, 
which is what's on the spine although my camera I don't know if you can make it out because my camera is subpar and uh, the shrink wrap is still on it on the case so this is screen media release SD SM-38 from 2004 TV edited version length 100 minutes pardon me getting really dry okay next up canvas this is from screen media release SDSM-07 from 2006 rated PG-13 length 101 minutes and I don't recognize anyone in the cast okay this is Chili Dogs this is also from Screen Media release SDSM-08 I've decided to only go through the E's on these titles that are still shrink wrapped and have, that have been also coming in because there are so many I didn't want in a video that was an hour long. This is Coco Chanel. I believe that's how it's pronounced. This is from Screen Media Films, which, if I understood their site correctly, means it was released theatrically, although maybe in a limited fashion. Like a, because some of their films I've looked up at IMDb and found out that they were released in only one theater, shown in only one theater, or at one film festival, or what have you. Anyway, this has two catalog numbers. One that would be typical for screen media, SDSM-09, and one that I have found that is um, representative of the kind that you would find with screen media films releases. 68109907 widescreen. Okay, the courage to love. This is also from Screen Media Films, release SDSM-10, rated PG-13. Now, some of their titles are region encoded for zero, which means all, any region. And some are region encoded for region one. This one has the symbol for all, so there you go. Okay, crazy little thing. Let me think of the song by Queen. Crazy little thing called love. This is from Screen Media, release SDSM-40 from 2002, TV edited version, length 90 minutes. Jenny McCarthy. In this okay this is from mr. fat w video and I ordered it because of the actress that is in it when I eventually get around to showing it well I saw her in a horror film that Fox produced in the 40s it was really good and she was absolutely absolutely stunning well she had a skin condition that made it difficult for her to work until her husband invented what is now known as the OB light and that hid uh, the blemishes the OB light 
Oberon. Anyway, Merle Oberon. And uh, Sancho Tone. Dark Waters. Let's see. The survivor of a ship sunk by a submarine travels to her aunt and uncle's plantation in Louisiana to recuperate. However, her relatives have other ideas or her. It should say for her, but it says or. Now, also in the cast, let's see, is Elisha Cook Jr. I like him. He was in a lot of films in the 50s and 60s. And also, let's see, where was it? Alan Napier, who, among many things, many other things, played the butler in the original Batman television series of the 60s. Alan Napier. Okay. Only, I'm showing through the E's in this video. This is one I picked up uh, recently at Walmart. It was either in the $3.79 bin or the $5 bin. This is a double feature. Deep Blue C and Deep Blue C2. And from what I understand from IMDb, Deep Sea Blue 2 is basically just a remake of the first film and not an actual sequel. This is from Warner Brothers. Both films rated R. And there you go. Alright. Based on a true story. Mark Wahlberg, Kurt Russell, John Malkovich, uh, Gina Rodriguez, Dylan O'Brien, and Kate Hudson. Deep Water Horizon. This is also from Warner Brothers. Okay, this is one that I imported from the UK. I have bought volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I've already watched volumes 1, 2, and not 3, 4, and 5 yet. Um, this is the Ealing Studios Rarities Collection of Volume 3. Even though these are slim cases, they each contain two DVDs. Each DVD contains two movies. So you get four movies with each volume. And I love British comedies from, well, especially the 50s and 60s, but if you go back even further, the four films included here, Disc 1 has Cage of Gold, 1950, Death Drives Through, 1935, Disc 2 has The Impassive Football, no, The Impassive Footman, 1932, and Frida, 1947. Region encoded for Region 2, PAL standard, not for rental. Okay, this is volume five. The films are The Ware Case, 1938, uh, The Cheerily, 1957, The House of the Spaniard, 1936, and The Beloved Vagabond, 1936. These are films that have never before been released on DVD, and if my memory serves me correctly, they hadn't even been released on VHS in the UK so and if they hadn't been released in the UK they probably weren't released here Region 2 how okay we're getting near the end this is easy from screen media release SDSM-41 rating TV edited version from 2003 Length 99 minutes. Okay, this is a, an animated film from Blue Sky. 20th Century Fox is a 3D animation studio. This is epic. I've never seen this one before.
Now Blue Sky has had problems as far as the only films that they release that make any money are typically the Ice Age movies. And the arrangement with the creatives there has been, well, you can make the films that you want to make, but interspersed with those, you must make an Ice Age because those are the films that make money. So Ice Age, Rio, Ice Age 2, Rio 2, or whatever. Robots was the first such film that I saw because I wanted to see it because uh, Mel Brooks voiced a character in that film and that is it going through the E's but I still have the rest of the alphabet to get to and in fact I am still processing the um, titles that I have recently acquired and those that I hadn't recently acquired but had not opened yet. But Okay, I did not pull, wait a minute. I make these kind of index cards for each and every video I own. The title, the format, the publisher, the catalog number, the standard, and the dates I watch it. I've been going through and redoing them all and I have index cards for over 3,000 videos and I know there are several videos I hadn't even gotten around to making cards for so I'm in the process of going through and validating everything. In the meantime, for those of you who watch my channel for uh, comic book arrivals, I not only have a huge box containing some $500 worth of comics from things from another world uh, right below it I have another box from things from another world with nearly $500 worth of comics and I have another package getting ready to ship from things from another world because of everything that's been going around going on around the holiday season and the death of my father and everything I haven't been able to get to those but in a couple of days I'm going to start sorting through them and then once I have everything sorted, I can start showing them. All right. And as always, please consider uh, voting thumbs up on this video. Uh, that helps with the uh, YouTube algorithm situation. And uh, if you would, please consider donating to my Patreon. It's down in the link below. And who should I shout out? Because I did lose recently a Patreon supporter, and I'm trying to remember who that was. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and shout out Andrew J.M. and Mark McGillicott, okay? And until next time, stay awesome.